Hey everyone, Sean Savin Moo, and today we're going to show you how to clean up around those greens and give you a couple of options. For those of you who have a tendency to have the chip yips, you get a little stabby, you duff a lot of chips, that means that you're not using momentum to execute your chips. And we're going to show you two different styles of grip that are highly effective anatomically to help you win this job. You don't want to miss this show. Now before we start, I know many of you have been watching our videos but you haven't subscribed yet. Could you please subscribe mm -hmm. to the channel? It really helps us out. Leave a comment or question down below and give us a thumbs up. And make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss any future episodes. I'm going to start and show you the standard chip. So we're going to do a chip face on and a chip down the line. And you're going to see the absolute musts that you need to have to anatomically have a correct chipping action. And then you'll never have to worry about technique because you just let it go and it all happens all by itself. And then Munashe, who has been chipping up a storm lately, mm -hmm. we went cack handed or um, cross-handed cross -handed or lead hand low, lead hand, okay. lead hand low like in putting and you notice a chipping action is like a long putt. So if you have a cross-handed chipping stroke or you've never tried that before and you, you're really terrible at chipping, you'll see another option there that's going to open up a new chapter for you around the greens. And Sav, she's just going to look pretty doing it for us. <laughs> All right. A few simple rules. Every instrument designed by humans for humans, whether you do fishing or you're slashing through bamboo shoots with a machete, the tip of the sword would never come first. The tip of the fishing pole would never go first. It's always the hand that comes first, then the handle, then the body, and then finally the tip that catches up out here. So if I was going to cut through a bamboo shoot, beginning of cut, end of cut, and there's where the, the sword would catch up to the hand. We're releasing through. Now chipping, because it's still not a, a very big movement, you'll, you'll see how the arms maintain the same shape back and through. Notice where you see the club catching the turf right by my back foot. There is actually a sweet spot as to how far forward your hands can be with each instrument. If you're too far forward, it'll gouge. If you're not far forward enough, you'll have to push on it. That's where you scull it over the green or you get too far underneath the ball and the ball ends up short. Sound familiar? So what we're looking for is the ball right off the back foot if you've got a narrow stance. See that? Now observe where the club wants to cut grass. Now, if I go a little wider, notice that spot hasn't changed. Notice if I go feet together, notice that spot hasn't changed. So there's a very specific spot where the club wants to hit ground. That's A. B, if you look at intermediate point, if I've got a spot in front of the ball, I always want to pick a spot no more than a foot in front of the ball to get myself aligned with my target. So here, I'm going to stay a little left of that intermediate point. So notice the blur of my club as it passes over the ball and to the left of the intermediate point. So where is the club actually hitting the ground when my club is moving in that direction? And I want a nice deflection along the ground. There you go. So now I want the ball at the back of that. So if I let the weight of my arms cut grass in that direction, I'm going to have a very suitable up and down. That's a foot and a half away. That's an easy tap in for my par. So as far as technique is concerned, this is really important. Many of you have been told to keep the lower body still. That's a massive mistake. If I'm going to toss a ball, so let's say I got a ball in each hand and I got Sav on this side, I got Moo on that side. If I want to toss th them these golf balls but not move my body, 
That's how it's going to go. My arm is going to crash into my body, my elbow collapses, and the darn thing's going backwards. So if I want to toss that way, notice how my body has to open up. You do this perfectly if you're going to toss a softball or if you're going to go bowling. If I'm tossing a softball towards you, notice how my left shoulder is moving back this way. Your brain actually has to go to the ground, use the ground to get your body out of the way so your arm has full access to the target. So a chip shot is very simple. A little more weight on the lead leg, about 60-40 in favor of that lead leg. And we're going to one for you, one for you, one for Moo, one for Sav. See how my right hand is facing Sav? My left hand is ready to go towards Moo. My left hand just went towards Mu. My right hand is ready to go back towards Sav. So, watch it now. Left hand under, right hand under. Let it go, let it go. So notice, I'm not allowing my left arm to hit me going back, and I'm not allowing my right arm to hit me coming through. So notice I'm going up and down, and I'm, my hips are moving freely. My legs are moving freely. So I'm just going to let the weight of my arms hang here from the shoulders and I'm going to use the weight of my arms to cut a dandelion stem in the direction of my target or just simply shave grass in the direction of my target. So get my intermediate point. I'm going to go over the left edge of that. Move that a little more forward so I don't hit it because you're going to see how the club stays along the ground. Let momentum cut grass in that direction. Feel the weight of the arms. Let the weight of the arms cut grass that way. Oh, come on, let's go in the hole. See how pretty that is? Once I'm set, I'm just letting weight, I'm a witness to weight cutting grass in that direction. So from face on, this is what it looks like. There's my intermediate point. I'm going to go a little left of that. See how my arms aren't colliding into my body? Feel the weight of the arm club unit. Let momentum cut the grass in that direction. So if I cut grass with the sole of the club, so if this cuts grass, the ball will meet the center of the face. And because I've got my ball in the right position, opposite my back foot, I'm going to catch ball first, then ground. So a little pitfall here, one of the things you don't want to do is you never want to face the ball. So if you face the ball, now you're going way out to the right. If I face the ball, put the ball back in my stance, face the ball. Now look at my, my stroke is going way off course. So I face my center and I just bring the club back. I don't have my intermediate point, but I'm going to let momentum cut the grass in that direction. And that's all we need to do. So let's have a look at Sav. All right. So Sav picked an intermediate point here, a divot in front of the ball, right? So you've got a 56 degree. Yeah. You're going to land it in the first third. So a good course of action would be land it in the first third and roll the other two thirds toward the hole and pick a club that's going to allow that to happen. So if she went with a 60 degree, it would end up short. Yeah. 56 should be good. Not bad. So that was about four feet past the hole, just blew by a little bit of your landing area. Yeah. So a little less momentum. There you go. Sweet. Look at that. So. If you find it difficult to use the weight of the arms and club and you feel that you're constantly, you know, using manipulation, there are some tools on the market that really help out. One of the clubs that we use at our academy is the lag shot. So you've got a lag shot wedge here. It's a 54 degree wedge. Yeah. It's very heavy. It's very heavy. So you've got some nice heft so you can feel the weight of the instrument. Especially with those little chips, like you know the short chips yes. that everyone like feels like they have to push on? Right. 
and even I've done that before. Mm -hmm. So like you actually has you slow down. So you're using the weight of your yeah. arm instrument to cut the dandelion stem softly yeah. to make it land, right? Softly is the word. Softly is the yeah. word. So now make sure you got your intermediate point. Good. You see your landing spot? Yeah. All right. Sweet. Very nice. So with this particular club, if you use hands, because the, the tendency here and what people don't realize is that a chip shot is a kinetic chain. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the weight of your arms and club, you're actually going to use the legs to get out of the way of that momentum. Right. But if you feel like, oh my gosh, I got to be careful, I got to watch out, and then you get very stick handly, then you're canceling the body's motion. So now you end up hitting yourself twice, and that's what diverts your club offline mm -hmm. and, and forces you to stick handle it. So that's what we don't want. So you'll notice when Sav takes her setup, she's using, she's feeling the weight of the arms and club, and she's using that weight to cut the grass. Oh, that's sweet. Get in. Great shot, Sav. One more. See if I can get it in. Let's see if you can get it in. Sweet. Look at that. You're chipping a lot better with that tool, <laughs> yeah. right? Isn't that something? But it's nice because I sometimes struggle with the little ones, like those short chips. The short chips. And, and others will also um, struggle with pit shots. Mm. So anytime you have a 40 to 8, you know, 40 to 80 yard shot. <laughs> <You move. laughs> right? No, because <laughs> yesterday. And for I'll those of around. you. Yeah. Stop pointing a finger at Moo, okay? You're going to make him feel bad. No, he doesn't have to feel bad. <laughs> so in the bunkers, I know a lot of people have struggled in the bunkers because you've got a heavy wedge and you can't force it and you got to use momentum this is fabulous in the bunkers as well yeah so what what moo is going to show you is because his dominant hand is his trail hand and this happens to a lot of you you tend to pick the club up in the backswing you know that hinge and hold the problem with that is so if i look at the proper arc of a swing mm. so if i was a lawnmower Here's my lawn mower. I'm cutting grass. The center of the blade is here in my shoulder. So you notice the club keeps cutting grass right under the shoulder. Watch how wide the bottom is on that. So I've got a very wide bottom that prevents me from sticking it in the ground. So the key here with the right ball position and staying low along the ground with long arms is you can't dig but you don't want to shove either. Now, because Mu was picking it up, he's trying to go that way. It's very difficult. So momentum's going here and now he's got a shove on it. And it was kind of like a big mess. So now what he's doing is he's going cross-handed or cack-handed. And when your hand, let's say you're gonna hammer something into a door frame. This is me hammering down. So notice how my hand is moving up and down. But if I want to hammer that way, Notice how my hands have to move in a different area. So if you look at Fitzpatrick, perfect example of a cack-handed chipper, there are many out there on the Pro Tours. Watch how his lead hand is over the club this way, and it's in a fabulous position to move linearly this way with the anatomy. So let's have Moo come on in here. Right out of the gate, we'll do a chip that way, face on. Okay. Look at how, if you take this hand off, look at how his trail hand is moving in the same direction. Yeah. That's beautiful. Put yeah. your other hand on. Awesome. So now it feels like he's actually hammering this way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Beautiful. Now, where did that cut, catch the ground? Right here. So notice your feet are together. So it's actually catching the ground behind your foot. Right. In there. Exactly. So that's where your ball position is going to be, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. So now let the weight of the arms cut the grass that way. Oh, that's sweet. That's, that came up beautifully, didn't it? Yeah. All right. So now let's go see if you can put it in. Okay. 
first one in by uh, first one in doesn't do dinner. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. When you, ha you have your intermediate point, right? Yeah. So you check that out, do it again. Have a check, check your intermediate point. Okay. So you do your practice swing and you see where the low point is. Very nice. And now how are you gonna advance to the ball? Okay. So many of you don't do this. Many of you do this here. You do a practice swing and then you reach for the ball. That's like going bowling. Here's my practice swing and bowling. Then I, and I go here to try and go bowl down the center of the alley. So now his arms are actually hanging from his shoulders and he's gonna use the weight of his arms to cut the grass that way. Oh, beautiful. So technically that was sweet. Momentum? Just less momentum. Right. So you can you can close the face a bit more. You got your 60 degree here? Yeah, that's 60. Degree. Good. So okay. close the face a little bit more and see if you can do a little draw chip. Okay. That's so. it. So when we're in the rough like this, mm -hmm. the leading yeah. it doesn't matter for leading edge. It's only when you're on really short grass or you're on Bermuda grass on, you know, yeah. when the grain is against you. Yeah. So here there's no problem. So you can close the face, okay. play a little draw chip so it can run. Let momentum, basically what you want to do is land the ball right over here. All right. Oh, that's perfect. Get in. Oh! oh. Awesome. Thanks for the lesson, Tom. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Isn't that great? So, if, so if, um, in terms of path between draw and fade, is there a difference in terms of situations that you would use it? N uh, no. Uh, on a pitch, yes. Okay. So when you're pitching, you would play the ball more centered in your stance okay. because now we're activating the wrists. Okay. But when you're chipping, yeah. the ball always stays on the back foot. So if it's an open face chip, yeah. it feels like a fade, yeah. but with a draw setup. All right. Okay? okay. So you're cutting through the stem with an open face yeah. and the direction won't change by the way, right? All right. So this is, people think that, okay, Here's my standard chip. If I open the face 45 degrees, they think it's going to move out to the right, but it actually won't. See how the, the ball keeps going straight? Yeah. Because it's such a glancing blow, the ball can only go in the direction of the path. All right. So if you notice when we, you close the face, it projected the ball a little more forward. Yeah. So that would be your draw chip. Okay. Same ball position, you're just closing the face more. Yeah. And you have the opportunity to do that here when the grass is longer, if you have rough around the greens. Yeah. And, um, or if you have a delicate downhill chip, then you would open the face right. and then cut through the dandelion stem. In essence, what you're doing is sawing through the dandelion stem mm -hmm. from heel to toe okay. for a fade. fade yeah, and that takes a, it puts a little more spin on it. Yeah. Takes a lot less, it takes the compression off of it and it lands a lot softer and trickles to the hole. All right. Okay? So hope you enjoyed that. See you next week.